Hi. Good morning, friends. Yes, sir. Please. Good morning to everyone. I welcome you all for the Kala webinar series four. The web series four title is Digital Archiving of Technical Grey Literature CSIR NAL Initiatives. This webinar series topic is going to deliver Mr. B. S. Sivram. Mr. B. S. Sivram is a team leader, digital archiving group. Senior Technical Officer, National Aeronautical Lab, Bengaluru. Since 15 years, he is working there and is a member of Consortia of VTU, Belagavi, and received a state award from the Government of Karnataka and the Consortia. LIS Academy member award from the VTU Belagavi also. He received award from the governor of Karnataka and he has published many articles in professional journal and he has presented many papers in the conferences and seminars and uh, Shivaram is actively involved in many of the association lecture series and other activities. Uh, also, I once again, I invite all the participants who have joined from various parts like Bombay, Delhi, Rajasthan, and many senior professionals from Karnataka have joined this web series lecture. And also, for the last three webinar series, we got a very good response from all over India. Around 100 participants have joined. So that's the reason this time we opted uh, uh, the paid version of the Zoom uh, let more number can join and my knowledge of already 120 uh, participants have joined uh, from all over India and uh, with this, in this lockdown period also we have done some academic activities through Kala because of all your participation and uh, before uh, handing over to Mr. Shuram to deliver a lecture I would like to hand over to give uh, platform to Professor Asundi to tell you about Kala, a brief introduction. Over to Professor Asundi, sir. Thank you, Dr. Krishnamurti. Thank you very much. And I am Dr. Asundi, the President of Karnataka State Library Association. In fact, the history of the Karnataka State Library Association goes back to nearly 60 years when Dr. Rangnatha started uh, in 1964 itself. And in 1965, the Karnataka Public Library Act came into existence. And uh, it is the only state act which actually included the state association as a recognized body to oversee the development of the public libraries. Unfortunately, in, till 1975, the, the Mysore Library Association, the Karnataka Library Association was working very well. For some reasons or others, it became stagnant for nearly 25 years. Then in 1989, we re-registered as Karnataka State Library Association. Since then, we have been conducting a lot of programs. For nearly 100 lectures, monthly lectures we conducted. We also held a, a Veterans Day at the decennial celebration of the Karnataka State Library Association. And we are also having a monthly as well as the special lectures and probably the webinar is one of the, the what you can say, the 
feather in the crown of the Karnataka State Library Association. And following uh, our initiative, many associations and many departments have also started the web -based programs all over India. I welcome all the participants and also I welcome Dr. K. Sh uh, Ms. Shuramo, who was a student of Bangalore University. And I'm very proud to say that Bangalore City has uh, a number of students like uh, Dr. Shuramo and others and Dr. Ba Anand Bhairapa who was also the student of Bangalore University. I'm very proud to have all these uh, uh, students as the heads of the several institution libraries and information centers. I once again welcome Dr. Shuramu and ask request him to continue with his series. Dr. Shuramu. Uh, thank you, Professor Rasundi. So he was uh, my guru and uh, a mentor. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, kind words. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at the outset, uh, very good morning to all of you. Morning. And hope everybody is safe in this pandemic crisis and uh, making use of this uh, uh, lockdown period for the various professional and personal developments. Uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, I would like to thank uh, authorities of Kala for taking this uh, wonderful uh, initiative uh, to host a, a weekly webinar series and uh, bring, a, bring speakers from all spheres of uh, profession to share their uh, experiences. And uh, uh, today I will be sharing my experience and my initiative, what we have taken at the CSIR NL uh, for, to archive uh, various technical gray literature produced by our scientists and technologists. Dear friends, as we all know, uh, digital technologies has disrupted all spheres of life. You name the domain, it has its impact. So libraries are not exceptional. So it has transformed the entire library operations, library services uh, in, a, a, in a new form. So uh, I, instead of posing a threat, it has opened up a newer opportunities, various opportunities so that we should upgrade our skills and reposition ourselves to be effective in this digital era. And today, if you, if you look at this slide, we have a various opportunities today. And today I will be talking about digital archiving part. Of course, in print era, libraries used to do a lot of uh, documentation work. Uh, 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 of course, uh, maybe all type of documents we used to uh, catalog and archive at libraries and disseminate uh, to our end users. Of course, digital technologies have brought in a new changes. So libraries today can capture these born digital uh, documents and I will be speaking my uh, institute experience and how we are able to capture almost uh, 90 to 95 percent of content which is produced in our uh, institute. So you all agree with me that uh, any institution which is uh, engaged, which is involved in research process produce a lot of content. And very, a very few percent of this content makes into a uh, external word in the form of white literature. Maybe it, uh, it may be a journal article or a conference paper or, uh, or, or book chapters or books, etc., which undergoes a peer review process and gets published in a regular uh, publishing framework. And large part of this content remains within the organization in the form of technical grade literature, which is also a very useful information source for uh, various uh, scientific activities. And of course, very little part uh, gets into uh, IP domain like patents, uh, it gets into a patent and uh, IP is protected for that organization for this uh, uh, scientific uh, literature. So libraries are facing challenges, uh, mainly in, uh, in capturing this technical gray literature. Of course, white literature is quite easy. Directly we can go to a publisher site or a publisher platform. If you have an access, you can directly uh, download that. Uh, same is true with the patents also. But the real challenge lies with uh, technical gray literature, unless until if your organization have a uh, clear cut policy or your scientists voluntarily, they uh, give it to your library, which in the most of the cases, which may not happen. So this uh, same problem was there with the uh, CSR NAL also. So we were able to address by having our own approach, by designing our own platform to capture this and convincing management to uh, make an organization policy to submit this uh, form of gray literature to the library uh, uh, platforms. 
if you look at what is gray literature there are various uh, definitions uh, the most accepted uh, definition was luxembourg definition which was coined in 1997 uh, which says uh, uh, the literature the gray literature is one which is produced on all levels of government academic business and industry and in electronic or print or electronic formats but most importantly it's not controlled by any commercial publisher okay and further it was expanded that uh, where the publishing is not a primary activity of uh, any organization who is producing this gray literature so why gray literature is important uh, so if you look at the nature of this uh, uh, information source it's quite uh, important because it will have a first hand raw data so whatever scientists note down it will have that whatever scientist makes into some sort of technical report or a project report or a project proposal it will have a first hand data and provide more up to date and detailed evidence so when we submit uh, any research communication to a journal or a conference it will be a very concise uh, report concise uh, research reporting so where it undergoes various peer review process and further it is trimmed and it's published but uh, we may fail to get it a detailed evidence of any research activity which scientist has carried out so which uh, fortunately gray literature will have that data and a quick access as you all know if you if you submit any paper or any article to a particular journal it takes somewhere around three months to one year or one and a half year depends on general review process so so that delay can be avoided if you archive this uh, technical gray literature and uh, expose it to your user community so that they can get instant access to this public this kind of uh, information and also it serves as a supplementary information source of course many will uh, prefer to refer uh, white literature which is peer reviewed and validated by experts but also it can act as a supplementary information source uh, we had an experience at our nal uh, because many of our scientists and technologists used to request this kind of research reports which has been already uh, uh, made 10 years or 15 years before unfortunately as a library we didn't have that particular copies and uh, with a lot of pain we used to say no to our users that this particular document which they are requested is not available with us so uh, there is a usage for this and uh, uh, research and academic institutes which are engaged in various research activity definitely they produce a lot of uh, uh, gray literature and uh, large part of it unfortunately it fails to make it to any library that's the reality uh, and i understand in most of the organization it's a, it's true so what are the limitations uh, which uh, which make gray literature enters to uh, libraries or which uh, which fails to access by many uh, many users who are in need of that uh, primarily it's not published by any commercial publishing agency so there is no uh, firm or a publisher who publishes this and uh, uh, it lacks a bibliographic control if you see uh, various uh, white literature like books general article and they have a standard bibliographic control to describe those documents uh, whereas uh, it lacks in gray literature and most of the cases uh, libraries or information centers uh, ignore this uh, by undervaluing its uh, archival value or so uh, but uh, what i feel is as a technical institute uh, as a, a research institute i think uh, uh, any technical gray literature will uh, have some value we have to determine that and uh, we should have a proper archival mechanism uh, maybe high quality but not peer review so people may not trust this kind of literature though it contain a very good information very valuable information since it lacks peer review process people may be ignore so these are uh, various uh, uh, limitations of course it's not in, there is no index uh, to uh, expose this content to the international community like uh, for uh, white literature we have a scopus or uh, web of science or any other bibliographic databases uh, which make them which index these uh, various sources and expose to the community and uh, most of the time their archival value is uh, very short maybe and uh, so people think uh, it's as an ephemeral material or transit in nature and they may not uh, archive so what are the types of gray literature a recent study by adams in 2017 by uh, meta analysis process they have categorized these information sources into various uh, band like white literature gray literature and a noise in gray literature itself uh, they have categorized uh, into three tier gray literature one tier one gray literature 
the one grey literature consists of uh, almost all technical uh, in nature technical documents like uh, technical reports technical notes uh, feasibility reports etc and often uh, so some of this content will make make it to white literature domain by uh, again further refining them and publishing as various uh, white literature tab which you can see here and uh, so at nal we are concentrating to capture this particular uh, type of grey literature tier 1 grey literature of course up uh, in tier 2 uh, grey literature you have various annual reports manual flyers government reports which may have some archival value which also which we can also look into it for archival purpose in tier 3 grey literature you have a uh, blogs some blogs may be really useful of course uh, 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 it may have a uh, uh, little archival value kind of a thing and you have various product catalog, newspaper, etc. They fall into type 3, a grey literature uh, domain. Of course, you have nice over internet, uh, which constitutes a larger part of that. So, in NL and what we are doing, we are trying to capture uh, various uh, type 1 grey uh, literature document types. I will show you uh, when we go ahead of this presentation. Uh, so, is there, a, is there any international efforts who are trying to uh, capture this kind of uh, grey literature? Yes, there are various uh, efforts internationally, of course, uh, uh, quite popular one are uh, in the technical reports case. So maybe many of you would have heard about NASA NTRS technical report. And uh, I, what I have read is they are uh, NASA uh, technical reports from the US uh, technical report market is somewhere around $50 million. So, it's not that it won't yield revenue, but uh, it will have some value so that many will access these kind of technical reports. You have a uh, US Energy Department OSTI reports, uh, which is quite popular. I have listed their uh, platforms on the right hand side, you can see. And from France, you have a chain repository. It has got millions of technical reports archived there. And one of the national level uh, technical repositories is NRGL from Czech Republic, which is also quite popular. And they are aiming to capture entire national grey literature at one platform. And most important uh, uh, initiative was the Eagle project, uh, which somewhere started in the late 70s and 80s. Then they made it as an online uh, database called Seagull. Now they have transformed it to open way, which is open access mode, where we can download a lot of gray literature. And there are various other. And of course, uh, in the late 2000 or early, late 90s and early 2000s, the concept of institutional repositories came. And many institutes started uh, depositing or archiving this kind of grey literature on uh, uh, institutional repositories. But somehow, uh, what I have, uh, uh, what uh, studies reveals that Indian repositories are not concentrating really on capturing technical grey literature. They are limited to uh, very uh, uh, white literature kind of things. So I have made a study of entire international repositories and the Indian repositories and what is the percentage of technical grey literature archived by these open access institutional repositories. For this, I have taken a data from Base Search Engine, which is the largest aggregator of open access content. So what uh, my study shows, and this study has been published in Emerald uh, Electronic Library uh, uh, journal. So maybe if you are interested, you can read this particular article. So all uh, internet, both international and the national, our Indian repositories are mainly concentrating on white literature. If you look at uh, gray literature part, gray literature is a uh, very least uh, percentage. Of course, in US, they have, uh, uh, compared to all other continents, European uh, repositories have got uh, uh, more gray literature. Of course, their repository count is also more. So if you look at the Indian repositories, the grey literature part is very less and in, in term in grey literature they are attaining only uh, thesis and dissertations, not other type of uh, uh, grey literature. This particular chart represents uh, Indian open access repositories uh, archived content. If you see white literature records are quite high compared to grey literature. And also it's quite high in academic uh, repositories because they are concentrating uh, in archiving all their thesis and dissertation because thesis and dissertation is also type of a grey literature. Okay, so this is a, uh, again, uh, I have taken a six major type of uh, grey literature that's data sets, course material and looked into various international repositories and what is the percentage 
if you see uh, in europe a large amount of data sets has been archived at institution repositories and uh, reports is the second type of uh, uh, document type gray document type and uh, thesis and dissertation is also uh, uh, quite uh, good so as far as uh, these are the gray literature uh, archiving by top 10 countries if you look at germany germany has almost 70% of the repository content is data sets so that makes uh, europe uh, repositories uh, as a major share of data sets and uh, it varies from country to country uh, we, uh, as far as document type is concerned but uh, if you look at all countries doctoral thesis are one of the common uh, document type of technical literature which repositories are archived if you look at indian uh, repository again only thesis are archived thesis and dissertation are archives which makes almost 80% of uh, uh, our repository content as far as technical grey literature is concerned rest all other grey document types are ignored as far as csr we have around 28 uh, institutional repositories which are in open access domain in uh, csr also only doctoral thesis were archived by various uh, uh, laboratories except nal because we have a uh, initiative at place all other document types are ignored so my point here is that uh, somehow there is a provision to archive technical literature at institution repository but it's not happening uh, so that's the there there is some issues there is some uh, uh, problem with this uh, kind of uh, archival at the institution repositories so what is the what is the uh, what is the solution for this so so when i informally spoke to our scientists and technologists they gave two three two three reasons why they hesitate to uh, deposit an open access repository of course uh, one is uh, uh, classified in nature because we uh, as a nal is involved in various uh, uh, strategic programs we do handle uh, various sponsor projects and all and uh, Uh, we produce lot of project reports which are classified in nature which cannot be put it on open access domain of course institution repositories provide us to have access control but still uh, scientists and uh, technologists perception is that if it something goes on internet may not be secure how whatever measures we take so that is one and some scientists also felt that uh, there is no proper review mechanism because they are in a crude nature and they don't want to put it on uh, Uh, internet as it is unless if you have a review mechanism which is absent in your institutional repository so at least internal divisional or organization level uh, review should happen then uh, they are quite confident to put it on uh, institutional repositories and some scientists also felt that uh, uh, these project reports in a later part they convert them into a journal article if they already put them on open access domain maybe if they convert this particular work as a journal paper that point of time it shows a similarity that means which uh, this particular work is already published in so on so repository and uh, it will be difficult for them to publish it uh, publish them as a journal article so in that case they have to justify to the editor and all these are the various uh, reasons our scientists gave at nl so what we did is we came out with a uh, internet based secure personalized uh, system uh, where uh, they can deposit without any uh, uh, ambiguities so to for your information to speak uh, about the national aerospace laboratories we are the only uh, research institute who are carrying out uh, a research and development program in civil aviation you have uh, various drdo labs who are uh, doing research on combat side combat aircraft that so we are doing research on civil aviation uh, domain and we are the largest uh, laboratory in the csir community we have a 1000 plus strength and 800 plus dedicated scientists and technologists working uh, in various technologies of aerospace and uh, our major uh, success stories are we have a two seater ansa trainer uh, uh, flight already uh, in the market and uh, we have uh, saras of course it's ongoing the project and drishti is a airport uh, visibility measurement and we have a several technologies i have listed very few and also we have various national level facilities which can be used by any uh, user group this is briefly about uh, csir nal and uh, any any archive any any archiving activity if any library wants to do uh, first they should determine whether really these sources are uh, archival value whether really users are using them so for this what i did uh, we did a 
25 years of uh, Scopus published papers from CSIR, 35 CSIR lab, I, we took as a sample study and we took references of all these uh, uh, 35 laboratories publication for the period of 25 years. So that yielded somewhere around 1 lakh plus articles. And what we did, we collected the references of this 1 lakh articles. So it came around some, uh, some 7.5 lakh, something like that. And what we did, we extracted the source information of, from the references which we collected from Scopus for all 35 CSIR laboratories. And we looked at the various referencing uh, referencing style. For example, uh, what is the percentage of uh, uh, review references that's white literature, and what's the percentage of gray literature which researchers are using to write their publications? Uh, if you take number of uh, average references uh, for any uh, CSR labs, of course, in engineering and physical, this domain is engineering and physical laboratories. Uh, we have around uh, 14 engineering and physical science laboratories and the rest are working in chemical and biological sciences out of 35. So if you look at uh, reference average is more biological and uh, uh, chemical uh, laboratories, whereas it was a bit low at uh, engineering and physical sciences. These are overall references and we wanted to see the percentage of gray references. The percentage of gray reference usage was more on uh, engineering and physical sciences. So NA is also an engineering laboratory, uh, falls under engineering domain, and our scientists were referring this technical gray literature. Uh, maybe if not the world average, which is around the six to eight percent of references are gray in nature by various several studies have proved that. And maybe in our case, uh, it was around four to five percent kind of a thing, and some labs are really more than eight percent. And uh, I'm sure from this study, we came to know that our uh, engineering and physical science domain uh, researchers are referring uh, gray literature, technical gray literature. Of course, percentage may be less. This may be because there's no proper archival system in place. So many users are not having access to this. This is the hypothesis what we uh, arrived. So if you look at, uh, if, you, if I say technical gray literature, it may be external gray, which is available either in library or on over internet or maybe open access domain. And there is an internal uh, gray literature, uh, which is produced within the organization. Okay, then we compare with the four uh, engineer, four uh, research uh, subject domains, that is biological sciences, chemical sciences lab, and engineering and physical sciences. Of course, biological and uh, chemical science internal gray literature usage was there, it was quite less. And uh, as far as engineering sciences and physical sciences, internal gray literature is, was quite high. That means people are referring their own technical gray literature to write a white literature. So this proved to uh, us that there is an archival value. If we have a robust uh, uh, archival uh, framework to archive this and make accessible to our user community, this usage may go little high. So that was that was enabled us to come out with a new initiative at lab level, our lab level, to uh, design a new archival platform, which should address our scientists' ambiguities like uh, security of uh, restricted documents and the review process, at least internal review process for this unpublished, so that some sort of quality is maintained. So all those features, all those feedback we took from our uh, scientists and uh, uh, we thought of uh, designing a new platform. These are the various numbers and various type of uh, gray literature produced annually, approximate numbers, annually at CSIR NL. So we produce somewhere around 100 to 120, 130 SCI uh, indexed uh, journal articles, some 8 to 100 uh, 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 conference papers, and uh, more importantly, technical reports or project reports are 250 to 300. These are the reports we were really missing from library point of view, from information center point of view. And also uh, CSIR and other scientists publish various technical memorandums and notes, uh, special publications, which is a feasibility report, uh, which will not be a, a restricted documents and various project proposals. So for, and some of them may not get project, but uh, they would have done extensive work to prepare this project report and uh, they would have prepared that and a lot of test reports and also so, uh, uh, all CSR labs encourage these uh, graduate and post graduate students to carry out their research.
Alors, hein? Ça, là, ça, on est tagué. Ok, ok, go avec ça. Ça, screen ou regarder avant tout. Mulla sir, Bharti dia. Mulla sir, Bharti dia nanti tu. Screen share, screen share. Screen share Bharti lah sir. Ah, iya. Yes sir, yes sir, okay sir. Okay. I'm audible. Yes sir. Oh, sorry for that uh, technical uh, issue. So these are the various. Uh, uh, various type of documents gets generated at uh, CSIR NL and uh, we are able to get this uh, 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 white literature quite easily. Of course, uh, the technical gray literature was a real challenge for us. And uh, as you all know, uh, CSIR open access, NL open access repository was established in 2004. Uh, it runs on prints. So here we are able to get uh, white literature uh, for our repository. Uh, but gray literature was uh, we were able to get only 20 to 30 percent, remaining 70 percent. We used to miss that. And in also in white literature, as you all know, all repositories, uh, if not all, majority of the repositories will have the same fate that voluntary deposition is very, very minimal. So all repository content is filled with uh, library staff. They majorly they go to the publisher site and download that article and upload in their repositories. So that's the usual uh, trend what we have seen. And uh, most of the time there will be a copyright issues. So from our initiative, what we have done is since we have an internal and we have a mandatory submission policy for an internal system, now we are able to get most of the general article in preprint and postprint format. So that we can put them as an archival repository in, in our open access repository and make them as copyright complaint. So that's one advantage as far as white literature is concerned we're having. As far as gray literature, now it's a mandatory policy at NAL to submit to our system, which I'm going to talk now. Challenges for NAL IR was uh, getting retrospective content is, was uh, very challenging. Of course, it is true for all other uh, uh, repositories also. And getting hold of non sci publications, which doesn't have online version, which doesn't have uh, e-journal version, it was difficult for to get that. And uh, poor voluntary participation from NL researchers, scientists to deposit their published work at NL repository. And of course, copyrighted work for sponsored projects, uh, there was an issue. And uh, as I told you, a lot of uh, project reports will be restricted in nature and many of them are not volunteering to deposit that IR policy. These are the various challenges for uh, NL IR we had to address this issue. We came out with a one uh, internet based uh, archival platform where uh, we convinced our management to have an organization mandatory policy that any piece of information which is produced at NL should be deposited at uh, CSI, at Prakash. And uh, Prakash is an archival platform, uh, what we have designed, and it will generate a unique number for that publication that I will show you towards. Uh, my presentation, a later part of my presentation. And uh, to give you a brief idea about this Prakash system, it's an internally designed and developed uh, 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 platform. And uh, what we have done is before designing with this, uh, we studied the uh, publication system, existing publication system, which was manual in nature at NL. So in NL, any scientists or any technologist who writes a paper, uh, it goes to uh, divisional, uh, DSC, D Divisional Assessing uh, uh, Committee. So Divisional Assessing Committee will look into our entire uh, uh, report or a general paper and check for any classified content is there. If classified content is there, then they used to uh, take out that and they used to suggest them to take out and publish. And uh, uh, we studied that process 
and also the archival part of it and we convince them our management to that we will automate this publication process of nal so that uh, automatically it reaches to that entire channel and uh, we requested them to make it as an organization level policy so that any piece of information which is uh, written by nal scientists and technologists should be routed through prakash so management uh, made that policy and we deployed this uh, on intranet and uh, with the access control only those who are depositing the documents the co-authors and their hod and the dsc committee members will have access to that document and of course metadata can be visible for all other uh, uh, people so that they can request library for a particular document and uh, we used all open source technologies to develop this platform and uh, our objective was to capture entire content produced at nal of course the support from management and uh, and we allocate unique id for each and every publication produced at nal so this is how workflow of our new prakash system of course uh, 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 we we employed majorly the e print workflow with adding one more module for review mechanism which um, many of our scientists insisted so each and every permanent employee of nl will have a, their user id login they will uh, and it will be same as our intranet uh, login same as intranet uh, user id login and they logs into our publication module and they, they select the uh, grade literature document type like project reports special publications uh, journal preprints conference preprints patents and we have added several more based on this document type the metadata elements will be uh, displayed and users fills in all metadata elements and uh, he uploads the document the uploading the full text document is mandatory once he uploads and deposits it automatically trigger a automated email to his hod so hod inside will assign a review reviewers will have a review panel maybe it may be inter department or intra department so he selects a panel of reviewers and assign them to look at they may not be expert reviewers like your general review system what they do is they look for classified information any similarity and uh, similarity or plagiarism uh, uh, check and any images uh, which are repetitive in nature because uh, some last may or so one of our uh, csr lab iitr indian institute of toxicology research they published several publication uh, papers in various journal and they used a similar images similar photographs to have a to study the effect of that drug what they have uh, uh, tried out on mouses okay mouse and the rabbits and laboratory animals and some agencies um, found out and made a huge report on various national dailies uh, making that it's an unethical research which csir has uh, involved so our uh, dg csir and our director also insisted we need to have a proper uh, and robust check on this kind of unethical research practices like plagiarism uh, falsification or fabrication of data kind of a thing so these reviewers will check only for that they will not uh, review the entire document as you review in journal uh, papers based on the reviewers uh, input uh, hod will uh, uh, approve that document for uh, further publishing activity or archiving activity once hod approves the document we generate a unique publication number like if it is a pd project document for pd hyphen division abbreviation slash year and uh, unique identification number uh, will be generated and this identification number will be incremental in nature uh, in nature in each year and also we have embedded a mpdf it's again a open source tool which automatically converts all file formats like us ms word uh, if it is a text or if it is a ppt it automatically converts into pdf and archives there and also we have a standard cover page cover page for each document type with a color coding and bar coding of this number will be done and it will be and this cover page is also will be automatically generated for each publication this is how we cover uh, we process this and uh, and uh, to and we have integrated our uh, similarity plagiarism i authenticated plagiarism along with this tool so for any journal article or conferences we uh, strictly do the similarity check and we upload that similarity reports along with the document itself so that reviewers and hod will have a look at that similarity reports so the uh, tools what we have used to deploy this prakash is apache web server 
and backend database mysql and the entire uh, platform is uh, uh, coded in php one of my colleague mr nishant has uh, contributed entire coding of this uh, 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 module and uh, it archives various technical grail literature publication types and the metadata has been customized to each publication each document type if there is a project report technical report metadata elements will vary for that and uh, it's a multi user categories with a specific roles you have a, a document depositing privileges for all scientists and the reviewer privilege and the hod will be a moderator or approver and we have a ethical committee if a, if a scientist or a technologist deposits a document and unfortunately with some reasons hod doesn't act within 10 days the automatical email will be triggered to the highest body of an nl publication committee that's called as ethical committee this document has not been uh, taken action for last 10 days so that the ethical committee will come into picture and they instruct uh, respective uh, authorities to take care of that uh, process and uh, and it is decentralized uh, since it is, we have a three campuses in bangalore itself so all three campus internet wherever they are they can deposit their documents and automated internal review mechanism we have built in, built in. so we have a subject wise uh, reviewers panel so that hods can pick up reviewers from those panels and ask them to do internal review not the extensive content review and the single point uh, it, uh, it also acts as a single point personal library for a depositor and also a personal library for that particular division it will have an entire summary of that particular divisions as far as Uh, uh the publications are concerned including real literature documents and it also as i told process a uh, personal library and uh, centralized archive as far as libraries are concerned for us it uh, it serves as a centralized uh, server for unpublished literature uh, of uh, an organization and uh, for any administrative purpose or annual report purpose we take statistics from this particular modules like a division wise summary or author wise summary Uh, how many papers how many pds how many technical documents he has produced that data can be pulled here and whatever uh, documents we want to put it on uh, institution repository we directly export them in an xml format and import them in our uh, institution repository which is a e print uh, back uh, repository and we assign a unique number for each document and it serves as a persistent identification number internally at nl level and as i told you we have integrated pdf converter which converts uh, all documents into pdf format for long term access this is how uh, the modules of our uh, prakash system uh, here document depositor will uh, deposit their document the, by selecting the type, type of uh, grail literature uh, an automated mail will be triggered to hod that so and so uh, author has deposited so and so document with a link to him you can just click on that uh, link and log into that and access that document and in between we would have been uh, submitted uh, similarity report uh, if it is a journal paper or a conference paper so so hod will have access to similarity report and uh, the full text of that document what uh, user has deposited and he will push the document to the reviewer panel so reviewer will get 10 days of time so he has to go through the document and he has to uh give his comments uh, with respect to the similarity and any uh, images are restricted content or any other uh, things he notifies based on the reviewer comments hod approves that document and it comes to repository so as administrator we have a overall control of user management documents management and other uh, uh, reports management uh, modules this is how uh, deposit document deposition and uh, depositor uh, interface looks like that he logs in to the publication module selects document type based on document type uh, metadata elements will be loaded okay metadata elements he will fill up and here we are capturing uh, a reference field and we have made it as a mandatory uh, for the purpose we want to see how many library resources has been used to prepare a particular Uh, document or a grey literature so what is the usage of our library resources so we collect references from scopus for published papers and the references from prakash uh, for unpublished literatures and we do text mining and uh, we come out that how far the, the content of our library has been used especially uh, in terms of journals and the e content 
so we make that kind of analysis also so once he fills up all metadata he adds authors who are responsible for this particular work then uploads full text document that's why in case of journal or conference paper here a similarity check is mandatory so he deposits and request library to conduct similarity check once we upload the similarity check he can deposit a document and the entire metadata will be displayed to cross check once he validates that metadata he can deposit then it goes to uh, hod area moderator area so hod logs in and selects whichever document type and he assigns a reviewer based on reviewer comment he will take a decision whether it is approved or modification required or he cannot approve that and here we have given an option to conduct a division level seminar also for example hod feels no this is an interesting area and the seminar should happen at divisional or inter divisional or intra divisional level he can invite he can schedule a seminar and he can send out an automated mail to entire nl staff saying that so and so seminar is scheduled on so and so day interested uh, people can attend that so based on that seminar feedback also you can take a approval or disapprove or a rejection uh, uh, decision for a particular document so here uh, hod can uh, see entire is uh, whole year activity how many pds how many technical memorandum how many journal articles has been published by a particular division this will be a divisional summary and this is the internal reviewer interface so reviewer once hod assigns a Uh, uh article for review a reviewer will get an automated mail with a link so you can log in to that uh module and you can start accessing the similarity report full text document he will go through that and he gives his comments so that his comments are also displayed there uh, and based on this comments hod will take a decision so this is an administrator uh, interface of course we are trying to inbuilt uh, uh data visualization tools so that how many articles how many document types division wise all those things still we are trying this uh, it will display the graph will be displayed and here we will have a various privileges like generating reports for annual report for uh, institution repository etc and user management document management interface and all so here once document is approved by uh, uh, hod so all editing option will freeze so nobody can edit that since uh, it has passed all the modules later part we cannot uh, edit that so what we suggest our users is whatever modifications they have to do they have to do before approval of hod head of the department so these are the various uh, uh, documents till now we have archived so we uh, we established this prakash and uh, deployed in the year of 2014 of course Uh, there we could achieve full so now year by year we are able to uh, achieve all the documents which are produced by uh, nl nl scientists of course management has a full support by making it as a organization policy uh, you can see various document types uh, uh, we have archived here uh, majority of them are project reports project documents uh, which most of the cases they are in uh, restricted access so once uh, it uh, it becomes unrestricted or unclassified users can come back and tell if they insist we will deposit them into uh, institution repository so that uh, external community can have access otherwise this metadata is accessible for all nl users so that uh, anybody can request that particular uh, project documents and refer that earlier cases what was happening since library didn't have this uh, archive Uh, this reports used to live only with that project leader or only that project team so it, it was not going out of that project team and only those project the scientists used to cite this whereas now there are various collaborative research work inside nl itself there are various divisions who collaborate for this work so they can refer these documents uh, documents and as i told you we also have a various uh, uh, students uh, from across india comes and do projects here at uh, graduate level and post graduate level and they do submit uh, one soft copy of uh, their report to library which is a mandatory and uh, what we are trying to do is we have set up a separate uh, uh, repository since they are not a permanent employees uh, we can't allow them to uh, register with prakash so they they hand over that uh, documents and uh, we deposit that uh, in a separate repository called sports so student project report server so Uh, uh 
we have uh, somewhere around 1000 uh, plus uh, right now for this screenshot is quite old uh, and what we are planning to do is we want to integrate this repository to i authenticate our return our plagiarism tool so we are talking to them uh, so that uh, we can we can uh, educate our uh, students who submit project reports and we can avoid this kind of unethical research uh, uh, practices in the beginning itself that we are trying to conclude my talk uh, so grey literature is considered as an uh, important information source uh, by researchers of course if they have access to that they love to uh, refer that and uh, the references various citation studies have showed that uh, this referencing of this grey literature uh, is uh, an increasing trajectory and rnd institutions i am sure they are producing large amount of grey literature and unfortunately Uh, lack of archival mechanism or uh, policies, uh, uh, they vanish uh, as soon as they produce, or they, it will be, it will go with an individual researcher if he leaves or if he quits that in, uh, institute, or uh, if his hardware fails, uh, we may lose that. So if we have an archiving uh, platform, it will help us to capture that. And the digital archiving of information sources is a core activity. Maybe uh, we can we can. Uh, Uh, give more. Uh, 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 we can concentrate more on getting these documents. Of course, our library uh, job will increase. Library workload will increase. Of course, it's worth archiving this. What I feel, uh, which is uh, evident in my case, in my institute case, and archiving need to be encouraged in terms of policies, in terms of technology infrastructure at institution level, and also in terms of manpower. As as we are witnessing, libraries are. <clears throat> library, library manpower is diminishing day by day, and dedicated uh, digital archiving system. Uh, I what I feel is need of a day, so that we can capture entire uh, uh, content or uh, information which is produced at uh, any organization. So I think that's all from my side. Thank you very much uh, uh, for your patience, and I will be happy to answer if you have any uh, queries. And also, our uh, we are trying to make this as a Uh, open source package and uh, whoever is interested uh, we, we we are happy to distribute of course with the permission of my organization and me and my colleague nishant are very much interested to make this uh, uh, make this uh, particular piece of uh, software into open access domain so that if it is of some help to anybody so we will be happy to help them thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, there are few questions yeah uh, If anybody wants to uh, have any questions, please uh, click on that hand raise button. So I'll unmute them so they can ask the questions. Sir, uh, this question from Sudarshan Rao. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does archiving of technology, uh, technical grey literature, is different from other kinds of grey literature or from other kinds of resources? the other kinds of resources means uh, see what we have noticed in our uh, nl yes sir uh, that the see there are around 150 grey literature types okay, okay. So that's what uh, adams and study has listed okay. so their metadata fields may vary from uh, document type to document type so in nl uh, our case was like uh, project reports or uh, uh, technical reports or any other uh, uh, document types there may be a different metadata and also uh, in some organization some researchers may not insist on that review process internal review process which we observed in uh, nl okay. so what i feel it varies from institution to institution as a document type wise major metadata fields may be shared major workflow may be uh, may be same okay. okay there may be some some uh, part of customization may be required uh, otherwise uh, uh, your repository is also fulfill Uh, fulfill uh, your uh, uh, means your objective, but if organizations specific policies or specific uh, uh, demands from user community, we need to customize. So in our case, we had 10 years of that institution repository in place, but unfortunately, only 20 percent, 20 to 30 percent of this technical literature used to come into our repository. So that forced us to come out with this uh, customized. uh i mean so uh, internally developed the system which okay. has got more effective in uh, nature okay 
सर वन मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एस मोहन कुमार या प्लीज गो हेड सर हेलो मोहन कुमार ओके वी हैव वन मोर बाल राजू वट्टी यस सर या या प्लीज गो सर वन मोर इज ग्रे लिटरेचर विथ एक्सेस रिस्ट्रिक्शन कैन इट बी एडिटेड लाइक अदर रिसोर्सेस सच एज प्रोपरेटरी और ओपन एक्सेस ग्रे लिटरेचर विथ एक्सेस रिस्ट्रिक्शन सी द एक्सेस रिस्ट्रिक्शन वॉट आई स्पोक हियर इज Yes, sir. Uh, since we handle a sponsor projects, okay, which okay. are uh, which are from DRDO, ISRO, and that, when the sponsorer will clearly tell that whatever documents, whatever publications we produce, okay, sir, should not be put on internet unless until they have a clear cut instruction from the sponsor. Okay. So what our science is insist, they want to keep it with themselves only. So what we are convinced is no, no, this is also secure system. Maybe today is it it is restricted. we okay. may not give access to all okay. tomorrow it becomes once technology becomes uh, 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 old enough to make it uh, in a open domain so we can make that uh, uh, document in open access or it can be accessible outside our organization outside okay. the sponsors okay. okay so review means for example definitely like uh, uh, it is internally reviewed and it is archived now for example the group of scientists who have produced this technical literature if they want to make it as a uh, journal article or a conference paper then yes, they will uh, rewrite that rewrite in a concise manner then they will subject to review process okay and they will publish that so same okay. format since it is not it won't have an access to outside world yes, i don't think uh, that uh, reviewing that is will be possible because it will be limited to the group of people inside the institute Sure. Okay. 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 The main objective of this Prakash, this initiative, what we have done, yes, sir. see, it was failing to come to library itself. It was going with the project leader or project team. Okay. At sir. least now it is coming to library, so that the next generation users can also uh, uh, read or can also have an idea about uh, how this kind of work has been done already ten uh, years back or five years back. I can have a look at it. I can improvise that one. That was our main objective. of course once it comes out of the clutches of the restrictions we will make it uh, into open access domain through our repository that was an idea uh, sir one more balraju uh, is having question yeah balraju can you hear me mr balraju hello yes yeah, sir go ahead with your question sir yeah, yeah. so my question is uh, If uh, grey literature is not a, uh, what we call is not a publishing literature, uh, how can we uh, access to it? Open access, sir. See, you have a lot of content on internet, lot of blog sites on internet, so it is not published by anybody else, right? Similarly, you have a lot of technical report servers like NASA technical report server, or OSTI, or Open Grey, and there are lot of uh, exclusive grey literature servers itself. and people are citing that okay it's not that you cannot cite that you cannot use that so many many citations exclusive citation studies has been conducted on the usage of real literature part only so it is up to uh, a researcher or up to an author whether really it makes a valid valid idea which he can use in, in his research okay as i told you there is no peer review mechanism so there there may be a question of trustworthiness what you what you are feeling i am right so yes, it's an up yes, it's, a, it's an up to a researcher who can judge that so one more question hmm. uh, yeah you are uh, automating publishing by own prakash what we call platform no mm -hmm. uh, for this which kind of software you are using for open source see uh, apache web server for server purpose apache it will uh, we have developed and backend mysql and it is coded in php it's a simple scripting language so php has been used and in the few places some javascript we have enabled and uh, for converting uh, converting word files to pdf we have used again a free source called mpdf we have fpdf mpdf modules which we have integrated thank you
Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, we have one more question from Dr. Meera Mani. Um, madam, please go ahead with your question. Uh, sir, good afternoon. Good it afternoon. was very educative information. Uh, uh, my you. question is, does yeah. uh, your library has the facility to access uh, gray literature uh, for private uh, universities? No, madam. Right now, since uh, it's an intranet, intranet based system, Okay. So you cannot access this literature. So what we are trying to do is over a period of time, uh, okay. any gray literature uh, which comes out of this uh, restriction, classified lectures, we will push them into our repository, institutional open access repository, which can be accessed outside uh, NALR, so anywhere from the world. So okay. NALIR. Through that okay. you can you can access our technical gray literature, which is not restricted in nature. So okay. as far as restricted in nature, no, it's not available right now. Actually, we have taken institutional membership Hello. of uh, NAL. Okay. So, yeah. Do you have any, uh, what kind of benefits will get it, sir? From the See, literature? right now, uh, institutional membership, um, what we have given is you can come to our library, you can make use of our library print resources. Okay. okay. So, we have, we are the pioneers in uh, aerospace collection is concerned. So we are the best in uh, Asia, I can tell, because we have a 3 lakh plus uh, technical reports of NASA, okay. NACA, all those technical reports you can make use of it and of okay. course print collection you can make use and uh, on need based uh, so, uh, Yeah, tell me madam yes. yeah, yeah, so if we come there we can access yes, the yes. real literature free of cost Yes, yes, need okay. based Okay uh, Thank you so much sir Thank you sir, One more question from Vinod Kumar hmm. Yeah, Mr. Vinod Kumar, please go ahead uh, thanks a lot, sir. Sir, actually, I'm having one question and one request. So, uh, on what type of classification you are using to, you know, segregate or uh, the class, the uh, grade literature? And uh, if possible, can you uh, arrange any demo? Since you are going to release as an open source uh, software, mm -hmm. can you uh, make arrangement for, you know, demo of uh, this software grade literature? Yeah, that uh, it is in our plan to make it as an open source software. Definitely, I will inform once we are ready with that. As far as classic classification scheme is that, uh, as I told you, the document types, okay, uh, gray literature document types, we are following uh, that Adams classification day where he has listed around 150 document types of gray literature. So what we have taken, we have taken very few document types which are relevant to our NAL from tier one gray literature document. And metadata we evolved. Of course, uh, largely we have taken from ePrints, which is which uses Dublin for metadata standard. Based on that, we have added locally, which uh, which we felt very important, like uh, uh, report number, sponsored agency, or uh, uh, that uh, document, uh, that project period, and that kind of local variations we have made. Uh, thank you, sir. One more question from uh, Shiv Shankar. Please go ahead. Your question, sir. Mr. Shivshankar, yeah, please. Yes, yeah, please uh, go good ahead. Morning, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Shivram, sir. It uh, was a very uh, informative and a good initiative which you have uh, taken in the CSCR lab. Thank you, uh, sir. Very much appreciative one, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I have uh, two questions, sir. One is, uh, uh, you were saying that in the Prakash module, once the HOD gets and it was uh, um, forwarded to the review committee, I mean review team, yes. to check for the images and uh, any calculation duplicate, something like that. So how you are overcoming that, sir? Like, for example, you may have a, an N number of grade literature and how the review team will identify this image has been used. See, used, this, uh, uh, this image and uh, uh, classified information, we are strictly following for conference paper and journal paper, which goes out of NA. Okay. Okay. And the preprints and all. Uh, this uh, journal and conference items. Because okay. Once it goes out, only people will come to know. As far as internal uh, gray literature is concerned, that image thing, uh, mm -hmm. it can be repetitive in various places because single project will have so many project reports and yes. they have to use similar kind of a thing. So we are very <coughs> rigid on uh, journal and conference paper of repetitive uh, this uh, image thing. And what we have done, for example, uh, if an article goes to a particular review, that all his author's publication will be visible by the reviewer. So that if you can have a related work already submitted in Prakash, you can have a look at that and you can raise an objection. Okay. That's so all. My second, there is no, my there second is no, question. There my is second no, question. Yeah, there is no automated uh, process to check uh, duplicate images. 
Okay, great, sir. So it should be so a manual. Se second question is, sir, uh, are you planning for any consortia of thing uh, among the CSCR labs to come out with an uh, uh, an interoperable uh, come out uh, mechanism? Consortia of gray literature, sir. Uh, this not yet, uh, Shiva. Maybe uh, we are we are planning to have a national level or the CSCR level. If not CSCR, means not only CSCR, national level a platform kind of a thing uh, where people can uh, deposit their uh, gray literature. Yeah. Possibly, maybe a lot of uh, studies needs to be required in terms of uh, copyrighted, in terms of financial modules and all. If you look at uh, NTRS or OSTI, yeah. they are all self-sustained models uh, uh, which are earning a lot of revenues and this revenue has been shared among authors or organization. So that kind of mechanism is not there in India level. Yes. So possibly, uh, either uh, in collaboration with uh, institutes like you were the Inflipnet or CSIR, uh, NISCA or uh, NAL. Maybe we can come and partner and we can uh, uh, think of establishing a national level facility where anybody, either, either can be any academic institution or any private R&D or uh, public R&D, can, if they want to publish their technical grey literature on national level platforms, we can think of that. Right now, we have not thought in that direction. Maybe that would be a very good idea to come out with that kind of platform. Yes, sir. thank we, you very we will, much. We will thank be you. happy to partner. We will be happy to partner. Thank ah. you very much, sir. Thank you. Sir, one more question from uh, uh, Sudarshan Rao. Yeah, yeah uh, Mr. Sudarshan Rao, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I think uh, Dr. Shuram has made a very interesting uh, presentation. Honestly, thank you. you know, to my knowledge, we do have a lot of literature, great literature, also in social sciences. Okay. And um, now the issue, what I really wanted to, first of all, you know, thank you, Suramji, but the one issue, what I really feel is, great literature has a lot of restrictions for access because it's unpublished. Honestly. Correct, correct, correct. Number two. Now, you know, its awareness is uh, not very well known to many of the people, those who are concerned in the subject field also. Correct, correct, I agree. In those kind of context, uh, now, can we expect uh, gray literature being cited similar to that of our proprietary or open access resources? Uh, correct. Right now, if you look world average, no, gray literature citation is somewhere around 6 to 8 percent of the total that's references, what, that's what you are which I have. Yeah. 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 It may be, there are maybe several issues. One, uh, as one of our participants uh, uh, pointed out, that how do I trust since it doesn't, doesn't have a proper review mechanism. Maybe if yeah. you address that and have a accessible platforms, like yeah. uh, none of the, the citation or bibliographic databases are exposing this literature to the external community. That is also one uh, lacuna or one limitation we have as far as uh, gray literature are concerned. Maybe if you work on these directions, like uh, having some sort of review process, exactly not uh, like a uh, uh, journal or conference or book chapter, some sort of quality assurance, some sort of platforms which expose us to the larger community with a bibliography okay. control and repositories so also may play. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So that may that may help. That may help uh, 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 by increasing awareness so, of. Uh, since uh, it is not really been uh, reviewed literature. Correct. Many a time. Many a time. Many a time. Now, in that context, whatever we really either uh -huh. use or cite, does it really carry the same credibility as that of the one that is reviewed? See, once you refer, yes. uh, of course, nobody keeps track of citations for gray literature, like what you do for journal articles. True, true. So, That's right? True. True. Yeah. yeah. So, once you have start establishing a systems, maybe they may come. Like, people also give importance to citations of gray, technical gray literature also. I think Google, uh, if you upload into Google Scholar, uh, it may give some citations. But as far as Scopus and Web of Science, since it's not part of those kind of uh, uh, databases, so there comes a credibility issue. We have to we have to see how it evolves, how it develops. Like, yeah. sir, thank you very much. Uh, now I request uh, uh, Professor A Y Asundi sir, sir, sir to uh, uh, concluding. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Please, uh, yes, sir. I have a Hello. small announcement, uh, small, sir. I have a small announcement. Yes, sir. Please sir. conclude. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, LIS Academy, in collaboration with NCIC Net Foundation, uh, they are starting a new webinar series. So uh, around 30 uh, weekly lectures has been already planned. So daily, Saturday, Sunday. It will be Saturday and Sunday, and daily we will have. They will have a two lectures from uh, experts from both uh, 
industry, uh, repute uh, corporates and uh, well-known uh, academicians and uh, research institutes. So it will be it will be on Saturday 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. and every Sunday 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. starting from 16th of May to 21st of June, sir. And uh, totally, uh, we have right now in the first phase we have planned around 18 lectures, and uh, we will send out uh, a list forum announcement uh, very shortly. And I request all participants to popularize these uh, webinars and uh, uh, make use of this. And we are trying to make an online certificate also for the participants so that it will help uh, help them to upgrade their uh, uh, knowledge about the latest technologies and uh, 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 so to, to name few topics, what we are trying to do is uh, like a, a job uh, in LS uh, market and communication skills and the personality development skills and web development tools, uh, uh, discovery layers, e-resource uh, management tools, all these sort of uh, topics we are planning. And uh, I request all uh, audience, all participants to uh, communicate this in their friend circle. And uh, we have a 10,000 uh, user license has been taken. So there is no restriction on participant side. So as many people can log in and make use of this. And uh, I thank uh, uh, Kala authorities, especially my guru, Asundi sir, Krishnamurti sir, and uh, Reddy, my good friend, for uh, providing this wonderful opportunity to share my little uh, initiatives at my organization. And I feel uh, it's of some uh, new learning for the participants and it will help them to um, have uh, more awareness about this uh, technical literature. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, final question from my end is, the participants are requesting for your presentation. Can we share that with the participants? Yeah, what I will do, I will uh, uh, mail it to you. Maybe you can uh, share with them, sir, because you have uh, their email ID, sir. Okay, sir, over to Asundi, sir. Asundi, sir, please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you, Hello. sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shirama, for excellent presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, I okay. I would like to add something. Uh, yes, sir. Since this is uh, for your uh, local organization, and yes, many questions uh, may not be quite relevant to uh, to be answered. Yes, sir. Because there is a lot of work that is going on all over the world about the great literature, and probably you may have just. Uh, uh, maybe knowing that NTIS is yes, having a very large, about 5 million uh, technical reports, which was actually created in 1964 as a clearing for house for uh, gray literature. Yes, yes. And uh, it uh, complete uh, uh, NTIS reports are archived. And uh, government of uh, India, all the ministries are having the archive of their annual reports. Okay. That is one information because you, you may not add that one to your organization because as you say, there are about 150 types of gray literatures. Yes. Sir. And uh, probably you may not have all them, all of them. Correct, correct, sir. It's true. So if you want others, then there are other organizations like newspaper agencies, publications, they are actually archiving their own newspaper. When microfilm came, most of the newspapers they started microfilming their newspapers. And uh, when I was working in IIM, I got the uh, newspapers of Economic Times in microfilm. Yes. Now they are all archived them. Okay. So there is NTIS. Then uh, gray literature has another uh, technical term is called the ephemeral literature. Ephemeral in the sense that it has got very short life. So it need not be referred. Referencing may not be there. But as you rightly said, in future it may be referred. Correct, sir. Sometimes we say that it is a mimograph report and we refer that also. So these are my some additions to what actually we have done. An excellent presentation. And uh, uh, this is... Uh, mm -hmm. Again, uh, a very good uh, uh, what I can say, initiative by Kala and uh, taking uh, this initiative from Kala, many organizations are actually following. Almost every day we get one or two emails through our list forum that uh, somebody has already organized a webinar about that. And I once again thank Dr. Shiramu and all other participants who have participated in this particular, the fourth uh, webinar organized by the Kala. I thank all our friends, uh, Dr. Uh, Subhash Reddy, Dr. Krishnamurti and others who have been organizing and coordinating the entire efforts of this webinar program by the Kala. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ananda.